Huh? Fred, do you want to check that mic and make sure it's on? Hi, everyone. Look at all you on time people. I love it. You know that's rare these days, right? People being on time <laughs> for all the familiar faces. Nice. We're missing a few. We're missing a few. He's just checking our mics and we'll get started. Did everyone get a snack, a handout? Water's over here. And then uh, one of you guys can hit the music when you head back there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you got lots of notes there. I know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't normally, I normally don't have notes on a talk, but I got lots of notes today. It's going to be hard talking to me. I know. They're just getting organized here. That one, yeah. We have some mind-blowing information for you guys tonight. You guys ready for it? Yeah. Some myth busters. I'm going to go through some stuff. So every time we do one of these workshops, he and I get obsessed with researching and researching and researching. And every single time we do one, we have new stuff to bring you guys. So if, you, if this is your first workshop, welcome. If it's your second, third, or 20th, or 30th, then you're going to learn something new tonight. If you don't, you can come report to me later. Because I learned a lot. I learned a lot of things. Hi. Hi. And you also, we, uh, you can't get mad at us for being the, uh, for delivering the message. We're just the, we're just the messengers. Socrates said, don't be <laughs> mad at me for telling the truth. Yeah. Okay, do you want control of this or do you want me to have uh, control of this? You have control of it first. the beginning. Make sure it works. Okay. You guys ready? <laughs> well, the cool thing is we're doing a heart workshop, and I will say this. Looking out here and seeing each one of you guys warms my heart. And um, There's a seat up here, too. So the Seabirds, I and think right I here. told you guys Brought this. Like, so you guys get, like, more than a business is a calling for us, right? And I think I told you guys, it's like we spend so much time studying and researching and doing all this because we have this huge moral, ethical, and spiritual responsibility. If you're a patient in our office and you walk through that front door, that we share this information with you. And at the end of the day, like Tim said, we do spend a lot of time and it is our calling, it's our purpose. And when we have people here to hear what we have to say, then it gives us meaning to our purpose. Because it's one thing to know the information, it's another thing not to be able to present it to people. So when you guys come in here, it's like we're very grateful that we have the opportunity to, to share these messages with you. You want to add anything to that, Kim? Nope, I did my intro before. Okay. We're good. So here we go. <laughs> All right. Um, this works. It's, it should work. You sure? Yeah. I tested it before. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. So. Let me see. Go ahead and start. I'll get it figured out. There you go. You just have to put the button. Oh. Go don't ahead. worry about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's just get into the incredible part. All right. So I'm going to start with this. And I will say that I've not done one talk in the last two and a half years without saying this one quote from Martin Luther King Jr. And I'm going to start this talk off with this quote as well. And if you've been to my doctor's report or any other talk I've done, you've heard me say it, and I do acknowledge that he was way smarter than I am. His vocabulary is much bigger than mine. When I read this quote, I had to look up a couple of words. So um, if you don't know these few words, then um, I, I'm going to break this quote down afterwards and explain what those words are, what this quote means, and how it applies to, to this talk and every other talk that we do, especially in these times. By the way, you guys are in the... The splash zone. Just oh so yeah, know. sorry. <laughs> if they get up and move, you'll know why. <laughs> Here we go. All right. All right. So here's what he said. If an earthly 
institution or custom conflicts with God's will, it is your Christian duty to oppose it. And you must never allow the transitory, evanescent demands of a man-made institution take precedence over the eternal demands of the Almighty God. And what he's saying there, with all things, there's man's way and then there's God's way. And man's way is transitory or evanescent, which means it changes with the blowing of the wind or the times or whoever's in office. But God's way is eternal and everlasting. And it's what was and is and always will be. And it's never going to be anything different. And we have a duty, a responsibility to understand the natural order that God has given us and to align with it. And when you understand this natural order, then you will begin to see things clearly for what they are. And you can make better decisions for yourself and your family. It's called discernment. You can discern what is good and holy and what is pleasing to God. And when you do that, I promise you every time you're going to find your way. And as we get through this entire talk, you'll see that theme pervades throughout especially in these times, man's times, where man says that we are more brilliant and judicious and we know a better way. And we see where sometimes the deceit occurs and where people get fooled and duped. And we take these half-truths and turn them into full lies. And it literally governs our nation. And it becomes our morals and our values. And we lose our way. And you'll see what I mean as I go through this. You have to understand when you were created, you were wonderfully and fearfully made. You were made in God's image. And this human body is incredible. The heart is unbelievable. It all has perfect order to it. And you need to understand that. You have to understand, like Hippocrates said, Humans, this is the normal, natural state of the body, just so you know. You are not supposed to be broken down, sick, and diseased. You are not weak and insufficient and inferior. You were made to be incredibly healthy and vibrantly alive. Hippocrates, the founder of all health care, even modern medicine claims Hippocrates as their founding father. He says, humans are designed to be healthy, but as long as you're whole, mind, body, and spirit, you're characterized by self-healing properties that come from within, an innate intelligence, and that perfect health and harmony is the normal state of all life. That's normal. That's how it's supposed to be. And I want to touch on one thing before we get started. You have to understand, when he said that we're intended to be healthy, he said we're intended to be healthy as long as we're whole, mind, body, and spirit. We're physical beings with an eternal soul. There's an intelligence within us. All life starts within a woman. You take the cell from a man and a cell from a woman, and you put those two cells together. All life begins as one cell. You begin as, you start as one cell, one cell, one cell. When those two cells came together, that mystical, magical something of life began. It's incredible what power <laughs> or intelligence takes that one cell and tells it to turn back into two and then to turn into four and then into 16. And over the period of 40 to 42 weeks, turns it into 74 trillion cells working harmoniously together, creating a viable, functioning human being. How amazing is that? And we don't ponder for a second that miracle of life that happens every day. You have to understand there's a, a master architect 
that builds the building. And once the building is built, he doesn't just hightail it out of there. As long as you are alive and breathing, as long as your heart is beating, that power that made and created you is within you and is giving all of its properties to your body. So you, you could be alive and exist on this planet so you could serve out your purpose. And it's hard to serve your purpose if you're sick, suffering, or dead, right? So the way I look at it, if you're going to be alive, you might as well be healthy. I don't know. Call me crazy, but that seems to be a foreign concept or value in this culture. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's your responsibility to take care of it because where are you going to live if it fails you? And at the end of the day, you can never forget that intelligence that's within you that literally tells your heart to beat. It tells your liver to produce cholesterol, by the way. It tells your lungs to breathe, a wound to heal. It literally takes the food you eat and digests it and absorbs it and has the ability to take the food you eat and turn it into the living, loving, thinking clay of a human being. It really is incredible. And you should never, ever lose sight of this amazing intelligence that's within you, that governs everything that happens within you, that adapts you to your environment and keeps you alive for all the days of your life. And when you understand this concept, when you understand that health comes from above, down, inside, out, you'll find your way. And you understand that there are laws and principles that God gave us that govern health. And you either align with those principles or you don't. If you break the rules, then you pay the price. And the price comes in a very dear fashion. And for lots of Americans, it comes in the form of heart disease. But be clear, it's because we're breaking the rules. And we look for health from the outside in, but no, it comes from the inside out. All of the time, every time, there's no exceptions. There's no other thing that heals the body of anything except the power that made and created you. And we can prove this, and we will as we go through this. Or if you don't get the full message, talk to me after, or come to my doctor's report, because I absolutely prove it in there. Well, before you go to heart disease, let's talk a little bit more about the heart. So the heart um, pumps 2,000 gallons of blood through your body every single day. And then it beats 115,000 times a day. But we know, so we know there's this mechanical stuff, right? This, this anatomical stuff that goes on. But what we also want to get you to realize, and this, is, this bounces off of him, that innate intelligence, there's energy. Like everything in the world is energy, right? So your body runs on energies too. And the heart is no different. And so you guys know for, forever, the heart has been associated with what? Things like love and things like grit and determination, right? So there's something, so there's something almost spiritual about that, right? Why is, why is the heart associated with those things, right? You don't say, oh, um, I love you with all of my liver, right? No, that doesn't make sense, right? Or this guy has the most lung on the team. He has the most heart on the team, right? That's what we would say. And so it, it's deeper than just some of the mechanics that we're gonna talk about because there is this innate intelligence. It's awesome. And so I'm going to let you hammer in on a heart disease, but I need eight of you guys to stand up. So let's start over here. So two, four, six, and then I need two more people. Stand on up. Eight people. We got eight. Okay, so I want you guys to look around this room that we have, um, the statistics in the United States of America, eight people out of the people in this room are going to succumb to heart disease. Eight people out of this small room are going to succumb to heart disease, right? Because it's one in four Americans. It's the leading cause of death um, in terms of disease process known to man in this United States. Scary, right? So the question is, if you think about that, like why wouldn't it be you, right? So those are the questions we wanna answer. We have to be doing things that are different than what everyone else is doing so we don't get what they got, right? Okay, you guys can sit down. Yeah, and you know what? Pretty much the rest of the room can stand up and then you don't have to yes, do it. Sure. I'm just saying, if it's not heart disease, 
it's cancer or diabetes. Mm -hmm. And if you include those other two diseases, five out of six Americans are dying from one those of those three major things. diseases. Yeah. Yeah. And all the answers and everything that we teach you here, right now, today, will apply for those other two diseases. And if you apply these for heart disease, you will be knocking out those other two diseases as well, or at least the likelihood, improving your chances greatly. You guys with me on that too? Good. All right, so, um, so it is the number one cause of death in the United States and really around the world. And, but here's the thing like I always ask people to, to, to think about because it is so prevalent here, but even in today's society, in today's world, I should say, in different societies, so 2022, you could go to other places around the world that have the healthiest, longest lived people, people that live to their full complement, more centenarians, people that live to 100 years or greater than anywhere else on the planet. And they have no appreciable amount of any of those major three diseases, including heart disease. Those people don't die of these diseases like we do. That's in the same day and age, just different places. We even send scientists and researchers and doctors to go study these cultures to find out what they're key. As if they're gonna find a magic berry that grows on a magic tree on a magic island. That's never what they find. They just come back and they say, well, these people just live according to that natural order. Remember the natural order that God gave us? He gave us a healthcare system. Let's just plug into that. And you go overseas back to America and you find a culture of the sickest people that's ever existed in the history of mankind. Did you guys hear that? We're the sickest culture that's ever existed in the history of mankind. There's worse. more cancer and heart disease and diabetes and obesity, depression, neurological disorder, immune conditions, you name it, it's worse here than anywhere else on the planet. And when you look at our culture, what you find is the culture that is furthest removed from the natural order of any culture that's ever existed in the history of mankind. To the extent that you break the rules is to the extent that you pay the price. And even if you live in this culture, you could still be different. You could be an outlier. You don't have to be like everybody else. You could still eat better. You could still exercise. You could still reduce the stress in your life. Do all the right things, get adjusted. And if you do these things, there's no guarantees, but you are improving your chances. But just know you have to be different. Five out of six, those three major diseases, give me a reason why it's not gonna be you. Unless you're doing something different, count on it. Now, let's go back. In the United States of America, this place right here, 100 to 150 years ago, heart disease wasn't the biggest killer. Heart disease didn't exist like it, it did even on this soil. Back at the turn of the last century, it wasn't a big deal at all. This is something that really began to take hold around the 20s, the 30s, really the 40s, and then it just exponentially started skyrocketing. It's really a condition that has developed over the last 75 years, 100 years. And then what you should do is take a look back around the world at all of humankind thousands of years ago and archaeological studies shows very little evidence of heart disease throughout all of mankind. You would have, if you look it up, you'll see heart disease was discovered in a pharaoh in Egypt thousands of years before Christ walked the planet. Okay. That was probably a very, 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 very small population of people that suffered heart disease thousands of years ago. It virtually didn't exist. 
It's something that we created in modern day society, just so you know. And it's one of the biggest killers. And here's what I want you to understand by that. The human genotype hasn't changed in 10,000 years. Or more, maybe. You can never have a genetic epidemic. It doesn't exist like that. That's not how this works. If our genotype hasn't changed, then what has changed? That's the real question. What took us from a place where heart disease didn't exist? And there's still places around the world where it doesn't exist. Even in this country 150 years ago, it was very minimal. And why is it so bad? It's not our genes. Stop blaming your genes. Don't blame your parents if you end up with high blood pressure or diabetes or a heart attack. Stop saying I familial hypercholesterolemia. That's not what it is. Not to say it doesn't exist, but it's very rare. Only 5% of all diseases are purely genetic in nature. That means 95% of your outcome and whether you end up a statistic of this has largely to do with something else. And what would that be? Food. Not genetics, epigenetics, or how your lifestyle turns on and turns off your genes. And you're making the decisions. Well, and the if good you, news is if the lifestyle can get you into the mess, it can also reverse it or get you out of the mess. You can so lifestyle yourself message. into a diagnosis yeah. and you can lifestyle yourself out. Yep. And if you want to blame your parents for something, <laughs> that ends up with this outcome, you blame them for the lifestyle that they teach you. That Time Magazine article I read every time I do a doctor's report. I didn't bring it up here, but it says, how do you take the temperature of a population that sprawls across nine time zones, 50 states, and a global rainbow of cultures? One way is by taking a close look at yourself. If you're like 67% of Americans, you're currently overweight or obese. If you're like 27%, your blood pressure is too high. If you're like 96% of Americans, you may not be able to call the last time you had a salad since you're one of hundreds of millions of Americans that rarely eat enough vegetables and what you do eat, you don't burn off, assuming you're like 40% of us that get no exercise at all. And here's why I'm saying this. Most troubling of all, if you're like any parent of any child anywhere around the world, you may be passing your health habits on to your children, which explains why this generation of American kids may have a shorter lifespan than their parents do. That's concerning to me. It's only getting worse. And yeah, you see a lot of adults in here, and we wanna help you guys find your way in this crazy, mixed up world right now and help you see the truth for what it is but be clear about this I'm just as much standing in front of you for your children and your grandchildren so that you take this information back to your household and you pass these values on to your kids and because of decisions that you make and values that you create in the face of a world that does things all the wrong way you have to be different but because of your decisions and the information that you pass along you will affect future generations of your family and your lineage through these methods in much greater ways than your genes ever could. Right? Does that, that make sense to you guys? That's really what it's about for me. I don't mind taking care of you guys and helping you out, but we're decades into this thing. We've got to teach our future generations how to live a different way, or it'll be trending like that, that Time magazine just read. It has to be different. And don't think that heart disease is any exception. It's insane what is happening in this culture. One study said that 20% of kindergarteners in the United States of America already have placking in their arteries. Kindergarteners! 60% of high schoolers already have placking in the all-important coronary artery. The main arteries bring a blood supply to the heart. This stuff is starting earlier than ever before. 
we've got to protect our kids. And it makes sense because look what we're feeding our kids. Look the what they're doing. The worst. They're not even exercising anymore. The stress levels are insane, especially over the last two years with this pandemic. The toxic environment we live in is worse than ever before. Kim had a beautiful line, I'll quote her. She said, why wouldn't our kids be sick? How do they even stand a chance when we're raising them in this culture? You have to be different, not just for your sake, but for your kids' sake. Or you can count on them getting sucked into this vortex. Because now modern medicine and big pharma, they're beginning to target children. They're doing cholesterol screenings in kids. They're targeting children for cholesterol-reducing medications and blood pressure medications. And you know what? It works out really good for them because now they've got a lifetime customer. Mm -hmm. My job is to keep your kids from getting there and if keep you from getting there. And if you're on these medications, to do something about it so you can begin to get off them. And you don't stand a chance unless you replace your dysfunctions with normal function, health, and healing. And there's not like seven or ten ways, there's only one way. And that's the natural order because all health and healing come from above down, inside out, following the laws and principles that were given us that govern health and have governed health since the history of mankind. Because it's what was and is and always will be. And this healthcare system is never going to be anything different. Or you could choose man's healthcare system, which we're about to reveal in just a minute. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, with the history of heart disease, you guys have to realize there's a lot of myths, there's a lot of paradigms, there's a lot of incorrect information, and so we'll try to touch on some of that, but he already mentioned this too, so you can, you can probably move on to the next slide. Yeah, and, and we will. And so, the, so, like, moving forward from where we're at right now, possibly. <laughs> I think there's a delay. I think that's the problem. Yeah, but here, way. I'll just do it. Just okay. tell me when to do yeah. it. There you yeah. go. So the future is not right for heart disease, and I don't think anything is going to change. And let me tell you why. Because money costs too much. That's why. Money costs too much. The current state of affairs, the way it is right now, and if it continues to progress like Time Magazine would have you understand, there's too much money to be made. There's a lot of money with sick people for big pharma and modern medicine. And at the end of the day, why would they want it to change? There's not a lot of money in healthy people for those two entities. And they're creating all of these cultures and values. And through this, they are gaining not just riches and money, but they're gaining power and authority. And I will have you know I'll have you know in all cultures, but especially in this one, especially over the last two and a half years, in all cultures, there are people that have power and authority. And where we see sickness and suffering, they see profit and opportunity. And please, God, don't be fooled and don't think it's the case because it really is. It is insane what's out there. And we are going to highlight that. We're going to get you to see the way the body normally works, and that's why I started with that Martin Luther King quote, because you need to understand that the body knows what it's doing. Everything the body does, it does at the right time for the right reason, and all you have to do is become educated and understand it and see it clearly for how it works. And then you have to understand that there are forces out there that are working against us, and it needs to be revealed. There's science that substantiates good information and we need to align with it. I hated the last two years because for 30, 26 years, 30 years prior to this, we would always talk about pseudoscience. <laughs> and they flipped the script and started using our own lexicon, our own verbiage against us. <laughs> in, the, uh, in the opposite way. In the opposite way. <laughs> but I'll show you like real science. <laughs> And it's medical science, and it tells us to act and do things differently. And I said this to some of you guys, I think, because we've been doing a talk like this for 30 years on heart health, I think this is one of the biggest deceptions modern medicine has used in this culture as a vehicle to create control and to create values that benefit them. 
There are agendas and be clear about it and we will highlight that. We're going to peel back the curtain so you can see some of these things for what they actually are. <clears throat> and it'll make sense once you understand how the body works. And then you just look at things from a vantage point, like I said with Martin Luther King Jr. You're going to see things clearly. It's nefarious. It is. It's outrageous. Um, like when I, when I read this stuff, every year we, die, we dig in deeper. I get more and more outraged and I'm more committed to make sure people understand this because you need to protect yourself and protect your family members. Time for somebody to wake up. <laughs> yeah, just um, for the, as far as the numbers go, because I looked this up, from 2010 to 2020, uh, the cost related to heart disease has tripled from $272 billion to $818 billion. And where is that $818 billion going? Where do you guys think? Yeah, it's going to the medical model. It's going to uh, the hospitals and the drug companies. Um, that is a lot of money. That is remarkable, right? So if we can get people to lifestyle their way out of that, that money is just think, just think of how much money is saved in that regard. And so just by the way, too, by 2030, it's estimated that 40% of Americans will die of heart disease. So instead of one in four, that'll be two in five. And that's coming right around the corner. So it's insane. And why would they want to change? How much money is yeah. being made? Lipitor is the biggest blockbuster drug of all time. $140 billion on Lipitor alone. Mm -hmm. And those numbers are from years ago. I'm sure it's I should have looked that up. significantly I didn't look it up. now. So you have to understand, like, through the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, that's when the the um, the lipid hypothesis was being postulated and they went out and through really bad science, <laughs> they substantiated it. But this is where it's like, you know, enter the evil villain in medicine. For the last two years, it had to have been a, a pathogen. It's COVID, that's the evil villain. You know what the evil villain is? Just so you guys know, no one gets sick because of germs. You don't get sick because of COVID. We proved it during the pandemic. Only. 1.2% of the people that ended up getting COVID died of COVID, which means that 98.8% of the people that tested positive for COVID beat the condition because God put an immune system inside of your body. And if your immune system is working the way it's supposed to, the germs don't stand a chance, including COVID. 98.8% of the people survived COVID. In the country, that's in America, where there is more death than any other country on the planet Earth, but we've got the best healthcare system. That makes sense. Whatever we're doing, the rest of the world follow us through this pandemic. If you want to have the greatest chance of dying of COVID, live in America. You'd be better off living in a third world country. Use your brain. Look at the outcomes. It's insane. Back to heart disease. You don't get heart disease. <laughs> they want to enter the evil villain. Da, 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 cholesterol. The lipid hypothesis. Terrible science that's been debunked. There's hardly any legitimate studies that support that hypothesis anymore. Well, explain what the lipid hypothesis is. That you get sick because of cholesterol. You get heart disease because of cholesterol. Of that's what cholesterol. it is. High cholesterol yeah. levels. It's the evil villain, and it's not. It's been completely debunked. So in 1985, I actually have notes or we'll be here for 14 hours talking. <laughs> here, I'm gonna put up the cholesterol slide, there you go. So in 1985, <laughs> the National Cholesterol Education Program was formed. And it was supposed to educate all of America on the lipid hypothesis and that you, get heart disease because of cholesterol levels and what you eat is the biggest determining factor and your cholesterol levels in your bloodstream are high because of the food that you eat has lots of cholesterol in it. And clearly, because cholesterol is the problem, that's why you end up with heart disease and clearly with America, with big pharma, the number one reason for high cholesterol in America, based on the response, would be a lack of Lipitor. 
because that was the solution. It doesn't make any sense. Even if you say that's the cause of the problem, Lipitor can't be the solution to the tune of $150 billion. But check this out. 1985 is created. They start this big campaign. In 2004, the National Cholesterol Education Program, they began to change the numbers of what is normal, and they began to lower them. That would be like a group of people getting together and saying, okay, now blood pressure for human beings, we're gonna lower it down. Or your temperature for human beings, we're gonna lower it down so we can sell more like um, um, fever reducing medication, something along that, those lines. And they lowered them to a level to meet new goals that they had. Now, in that group, there was a subset of people that were at risk that they actually lowered down their levels, they said the recommended LDL or bad cholesterol, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, they lowered it to 70 milligrams per deciliter for that subset of group, that subset of people who were at high risk, they called it. You know what? It is virtually impossible to reach those numbers, 70 milligrams per deciliter, naturally. The only way to possibly achieve it is artificially by taking medication. There's virtually no chance of it other than that. They said that statins are, are thought to be so essential that according to their official government guidelines, 40 million Americans should be taking them. And then conflict of interest. Eight of the nine experts on that panel, they're on the payroll of Big Pharma. You guys know just it's like so a merry-go-round. It's a merry-go-round of They just rotate and, these yeah. people and, around. And agencies and boards. Creating and, these values. Yeah. And so throughout this talk, I put lots of quotes in here from medical doctors because I don't want you to think these are my thoughts. I want you to understand that the, the truth sounds the same no matter who's saying it. So this Robert Hayward University... Dr. Robert Hayward, University of Michigan Medical School, said it's almost impossible to find someone who believes strongly in statins who does not get a lot of money from the industry. <laughs> Check this out. Back in the day, I don't know if you remember the ads that came out with Dr. Robert Jorvik. And they came out there, it was, um, and they said that, you know, Lipitor, that you have a 30, if you take Lipitor, your chances of developing heart disease is 36% less than someone who doesn't take Lipitor. And they cited a study. And by the way, lots of times, all you have to do is flip the study over and see who sponsors it to understand why it turns out the way it does. But then you have to understand how they manipulate the numbers. And in this study, people had to take, they took Lipitor for three and a half years every day for three and a half years and to where they get that 36 percent is that three out of ten three out of a hundred people three percent of the people who were taking a sugar pill a placebo ended up with a heart attack and two percent of the people that were taking Lipitor ended up with a heart attack and you take that difference <laughs> And they say you have a 36% chance less of ending up with a heart attack if you're taking Lipitor. Hey, I have a stats background. I can pretty much make anything say anything I want to, right? And so I'm one of those people that will dig in and find out, well, what's, you know, what's more of the story? Because when you look at that stuff, they can throw out any, they can back up any number that they want to throw so out. So that's where they come up with this thing called NNT, numbers needed to treat. So how many people based on that, need to take Lipitor in order for one person to benefit. And the number is 100 people, because there was only a difference of one between the three and the two. 100 <laughs> people needed to take Lipitor for three and a half years for one person to benefit from it. So the numbers needed to treat would be 100 for that particular medication. So this one guy out of North Carolina, a medical doctor, Dr. Norton Hadler, professor of medicine, he said anything over numbers needed to treat of 50 is worse than winning a lottery. 
and there may be no winners. And this Dr. Jerome Hoffman, he said that the numbers actually, when you look at other studies, not just that one that was sponsored by Pfizer, the maker of Lipitor, he said other studies say that really the number needed to treat points to 250. And his quote was this, and I love it because it was brilliant. Yeah, I got it up there. Yeah, it says, <laughs> what if you put 250 people in a room and told them they would each pay $1,000 a year for a drug they would have to take every day? Then many would get diarrhea and muscle pain, and that 249 would have no benefit, and that they would do just as well exercising. How many of you, how many of you would take that? Would because I literally, <laughs> that's what we're up against, and that's what you're up against when you're taking Lipitor. There's very little benefit from these things. And what I want you guys to understand is that what cholesterol actually is and how the body works. Cholesterol, all it is, is a soft, waxy substance in the body. That's all it is. And the body needs cholesterol in order to exist. Did you guys know that? You have to have cholesterol because it makes up the cell membrane virtually of the the 74 trillion cells that make up your body. It's, it's necessary to combat when a cell becomes damaged for it to heal and repair. You need cholesterol for bile and for digestion. This is what helps your body emulsify fat. You need cholesterol for the manufacturing of vitamin D, which every cell in your body virtually needs in order to stay healthy. You have to have cholesterol for these things. You need cholesterol for hormones like mm -hmm. testosterone and progesterone and estrogen and cortisone. All these things require um, cholesterol. Your brain is made up 60% of fat and cholesterol. It's like what helps to, to make nerve endings and for the uptake of um, serotonin and things like that. For brain chemistry, cholesterol is important. It's an antioxidant in the body. It's protecting it. Your body needs cholesterol. Do you understand without cholesterol, deficient levels in cholesterol, you would have no cells, you would have no bone, you would have no muscle, there would be no movement, there would be no sex, there would be no reproduction. Your brain wouldn't work, you would be depressed. There would be no life without cholesterol. And listen, check this out now. Here's where you need to really dial in and go back to that Martin Luther King quote. Let me tell you how the body works. What system in the body controls every single thing and governs everything in the, in the human body? What system? The nervous system. The nervous system. And this is how the body works because it's infinitely wise. Your brain creates a signal, sends it down the spinal cord, out the nerves, tells every part of the body what to do and how to work. And then you have receptor cells and every part of the body will send messages back to the brain. So your brain knows what's going on in every cell of your body all of the time and it adapts you to your environment and regulates and harmonizes and keeps you healthy and well. And you have a bad lifestyle. And you do things that create inflammation in the body. And inflammation we know is at the root of all diseases, all new millennium diseases, from cancer to heart disease to diabetes to autoimmune conditions, it's from chronic inflammation, from the bad lifestyle that you lead that causes the infl inflammation in your body, causes the cells to become inflamed and damaged. And the cells and the body's infinitely wise. These damaged cells will send signals through the nervous system up to the brain, telling it, that there is damage. And the brain, in its infinite wisdom, because it's governed through the spirit that knows all, the greatest doctor in the world lives within you. And it's so smart that it takes and sends a message from the brain down the spinal cord and out the nerves to the liver. And it tells the liver to produce cholesterol because cholesterol is what your body needs to heal and repair those cells. And cholesterol is just cholesterol. There's no good or bad cholesterol. It's just cholesterol. We label this to confound and confuse. And we call it bad. You have lipoproteins. And what they do is they transport the cholesterol. It's where it begins to get confusing. And where you start to see the... the the lipid hypothesis kick into full gear. 
And so you have low density lipoproteins that will grab the cholesterol because it's just cholesterol and it's like an uber and it just takes it out to the tissue cells that are damaged and that's why they call it bad cholesterol because it's taking it from the liver out to the vessels in the tissue cells and when the cells heal and repair then the cholesterol jumps in another uber right and it takes it via these lipoproteins now it's high density lipoproteins hdl and it takes it back to the liver to be recycled and used again for future need and it's through this whole mechanism that the body regulates and harmonizes and it works the way it's supposed to and the body heals the damage that's being created from your lifestyle and when you start taking cholesterol reducing medication what you're doing is undermining what the body's naturally trying to do to heal and protect itself we're working against the natural order that's been created and again so don't think it's just me saying this there are plenty of studies that substantiate everything that i'm saying so in the journal of acquired immune deficiency syndrome so it would be aids and human retrovirology so you had three hundred thousand young and middle-aged men and the number of men um, whose cholesterol was lower than 160 so that's very low right and who died from AIDS was four times higher than the number of men who died from AIDS whose cholesterol was above 240 because the cholesterol is helping to heal and repair the tissue cells and when you lower it you literally weaken the immune response in your body's ability to heal and recover it's everything we just talked about it's crazy this, right it's like so alternative to what everyone's told it, it's insane it goes we, on. We know it is. so 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 in this study so this was done at ucla department of medicine and cardiomyopathy and so it was, it was um it had a thousand patients with severe heart failure these patients had severe heart failure after five years of study 62 percent of the patients with cholesterol below 129 had died but only half as many of the patients with cholesterol above 223. so you have double the risk of dying if you've got heart failure if they bring your cholesterol down to those ridiculously low numbers or you could say you have double the chance of surviving if your cholesterol levels are up where they need to, to be to heal and repair because that's what the body does is this shocking information guys like this is you are not told this stuff and it's it's out there like all of the research is out there it's insane researchers it's insane. followed 114 patients with heart problems who began taking cholesterol lowering drugs they found that every point of decrease of serum cholesterol there was a 36 percent increase in the risk of death and that was out of a study out of uh, the uk and so this study right here um, 19 large studies of more than 68,000 deaths re um, reviewed by um, this one doctor who was at the university of Min minnesota he said that lower cholesterol <coughs> predicted an increased risk of dying of gastrointestinal and respiratory diseases and then another study um by this uh actually no that same guy he said this let, let me just give you like this this is what the guy who started this, this study in fact, who ran the study said said that it is difficult to explain away the fact that during the period of life in which most uh, uh, cardiovascular disease occurs and from which most people die and most of us die from cardiovascular disease high cholesterol occurs most often in people with the lowest death rate he also said that how is it possible that high cholesterol is harmful to the artery walls and causes fatal coronary heart disease if those whose cholesterol is the highest live longer than those whose cholesterol is low to the public and scientific community i say wake up and that's ufe rav um Rastnav, md and phd yeah it's it's absolutely insane and when i talk to people about this and i talk about it in my nutrition 101 
if you just look common sense, like if you look at mother's breast milk, right? It's mostly made up of fat and most of that fat is cholesterol. And so if you think about it, like how is cholesterol good for a brand new infant baby human to grow and develop? I mean, they're developing at exponential rates and then it suddenly becomes bad, right? It's not. Cholesterol is not a bad thing. And so we've just twisted this whole thing into this whole story and it's a story and people are going down this path and I guarantee you like heart doctors are still saying all the same stuff, right? You go and you have high cholesterol and you get put on a statin. It's like pen pad reflex. We, it's like almost everybody. And while you're on that topic too, I saw another study that said that if a mother breastfed their child, then that child will have greater chance of not ending up with heart disease or high cholesterol later on in life. Mm -hmm. And not only was the baby protected, but the mother who did the breastfeeding also had a much significant decrease <clears throat> in those incidences of those conditions and diseases. It's amazing how the body works. And so, and- Well, can I say one more thing on that? Ahead, yeah. So, and just keep this mantra in your mind. The body knows what it's doing, right? Your body's either smart or stupid right? Your body's smart. It's never stupid. And so if something is happening, there's a reason for it. And so to just go and medicate something without finding the reason why is just insanity. Your body knows what it's doing. Your body's smart, not stupid, smart, not stupid. Nothing it does is stupid, right? And so we have to take a, a big picture view of it and figure out why is, why are these things happening, right? Why is cholesterol having to come on the scene? There's some sort of damage that's needing to be repaired, right? So just kind of keep that in your mind. So not only is it when you take the Lipitor, does it undermine your body's mechanisms, right? Not only does it do that, but every single drug when you take it has physiological effects on the body. One of the effects is the desired effect, but there's a whole cascade of physiological effects that you have to consider. Many of them are undesirable or what we call side effects. So premium non nocerum, first do no harm. And every medical doctor, they take that oath and it goes out the window when it comes to this. And you look at the science, you need to take this packet of information. And if your medical doctor tries to put you on a cholesterol reducing medication, you need to hand them the packet and say, doc, are you trying to kill me? That's what you need to ask him. And he's gotta do the research and the science and you have to understand how this works too. Many medical doctors, the minute they graduate, their education is over unless someone, some slick talker comes in who is the drug rep. And that's where they're getting their education. They're getting their education from the pharmaceutical reps. What do you think they're going to tell them? Who have no medical not, degrees, by the and way. And it's not like you're well-intentioned doctors trying to kill you. It's just part of the system. This is the way the system is broken down and works. And if your well-intentioned medical doctor is willing to stand up and go against the machine, they get ostracized and they get banished. And we saw that during this pandemic like never before. There are protocols that could have been more effective than the ones that were instituted by the National Institute of Health that could have been more effective and saved, well, I don't wanna say save lives, but could have had different outcomes, not killed as many people. But if a doctor tried to use those techniques, they were ostracized, they spoke out against this, the system or the machine during this pandemic, they were completely ostracized. Completely ostracized. And it's insane. And, and so and these people, doctors are handcuffed. Yeah. They're handcuffed. The well-intentioned doctor's handcuffed. But I do know for a fact that Big Pharma knows all of the science mm -hmm. and they ignore it. And at the end of the day, there are nefarious forces that are at play here. And don't think that they're not. And you have to become your own advocate. You need to know this information and don't trust a single thing that I say tonight. You look up the information and see what you conclude. You go look up the lipid hypothesis and see what you come up with. <laughs> you go find one study, find me one study that proves that when you take Lipitor, your <clears throat> chances of dying improves. Show me one study, somebody show me one. And I challenge you to find that. Yeah, and the danger of suppressing those doctors is it doesn't give us people the opportunity to see both sides of the story and decide for ourselves and use something called discernment, right? We're just like force fed this stuff down our throats and not able to use our own judgment and our own discernment. I think over the past two years, my favorite word in the English language right now is discernment. 
and it's lacking. Critical thinking is gone, discernment out the window, and so we need to get back to that. We need to take control back. And we can only do that if we're looking for the information and demanding it and not just listening to the parrots on the TV. First, do no harm. These are side effects of Lipitor, just so you know. Liver damage, neuropathy, severe joint pain and ligament and tendon rupture, muscle wasting and atrophy, heart failure. Um, it, uh, so now you, have, uh, you lose that antioxidant, so your fight against cancer and aging becomes compromised, depression, memory loss, and then it stops the production of CoQ10 as well. Yeah, I'll talk about and that so in a minute. CoQ10 is so critically important. I'll just make mention of it and some of the things it does, but it helps for proper energy flow and muscle function. And I, I want to bring this up because um, what do you, like you're literally shutting down the muscles as Kim will talk about. If you're taking a cholesterol reducing medication, you're taking statin, you have to be taking CoQ10. Mm -hmm. But there was one study that showed that if you are on a statin, your chances for ending up with congestive heart failure increases by two times the amount. It and doubles. why would people be taking a it statin? It doubles. <laughs> and so why is that true? Because the, the heart is a giant muscle. And when you're taking a statin, it's shutting down CoQ10, which these muscles need to function. And when, they, when CoQ10 is depleted, the muscles begin to fail. That's why people increase their chances. They double their risk of getting heart failure when they're taking Lipitor. Again, you ask or your any doctor. Statin, any statin. You take. You ask your doctor when he gives you that prescription. Are you trying to kill me? And I will give <laughs> you the studies, and you hand them the packets because I guarantee the slick talk. The slick talking um, pharmaceutical rep is not giving them that information. They're not giving them that information. And it goes on and on and on. I think we skipped through a couple of these. So what do we want to? Go ahead. We talked about all this, right? Yeah. High so blood pressure. A of these. Oh, yeah. Talk about high blood pressure. Yeah. I mean, this is another epidemic problem. Like I said, 27% of Americans have high blood pressure. And again, anytime your body's symptomatic sick or you have a diagnosis, you have to consider why. There's a cost to all problems. You're designed to be healthy and well. And when you're not in that state, something's not working right within you. We've got to get to the cause of the problem. And this is often a result of two of the other essentials that we talk about primarily, um, but a, cu a culmination of all of these things. So I'm actually gonna save some of this information when we get to those other two ones because I'm gonna bring okay. them in at a higher level there. Okay. So let's go, skip let's over Let's see, this. the solution. And the guys, all the stuff that we're talking about is, it's very common, but it's not normal, right? So again, I'm trying to give you these mantras that you can keep saying, it's common, but it's not normal. So normal is to be healthy and your body functioning optimally. Uh, all this stuff that we're talking about is abnormal. And so one quote that I love, it's a chiropractic quote, quote by B.J. Palmer, who says that med medicine is the study of disease and what causes man to die, right? Chiropractic, and why would a chiropractor be bringing you a heart health workshop, right? But chiropractic is the study of health and what causes man to live. Right? And that's, that's the bottom line of what the difference is between the medical model and more of a natural holistic approach to health. And I love that quote because that's the answer. Right? We're talking about health and what helps people to live and getting to root causes of problems. And so when we talk about the five essentials, it's not like the five good ideas or you know, pick one or two of them. It's the five essentials. These things are essential to health and to life and to being vibrantly alive for as long as you're on this planet. And so now we'll get into um, the solution. So we give you all the bad news. Well, he's probably got some more bad news for you, but, but we wanna give you guys solutions. So giving you guys all the bad news and you walk out of here and you don't have no tools in your tool belt, right? It doesn't make sense. So we're gonna talk about um, nutrition. I'm not gonna go too, too deep here, um, but you know, we have to, I have a Nutrition 101 coming up next Tuesday too. I do it online, it's a Zoom, if you guys wanna be on that. Um, but, you know, when it comes to heart disease, we hear that, you know, it's low fat, low fat, low fat, right? Because cholesterol has been the enemy, fat has been the enemy. We still hear this today, right? Everything, you should be eating a low fat diet. Well, if we just look at the statistics, and since the 80s, as far back as I can remember, you know, being a, a teenager in the 80s, it's like everything was low fat. You go and you find all these low fat products, you go to the grocery store, there's millions of them. But what has it done for us, right? What has it done for us? 
all the statistics are going in the wrong direction. And just like cholesterol, you need those good healthy fats for all those same reasons, right? And fat, good healthy fat is the number one missing ingredient that people are just not eating. And he mentioned our kids. Kids are not eating good fats. All they're eating is damaged, processed crap fats, right? Um, they are, they're eating the worst of the worst. And so we need to be eating not only like good healthy fats, but a lot of them. Right? We need to be eating good healthy fats with every single meal. And so this whole low fat thing is just insane. And so it's more the carbohydrates that are causing the problem, especially the processed carbohydrates. Um, so if you guys have been around for a while, you know we have our core and advance plan. And on our advance plan, we're really restricting a lot of those carbohydrates to allow your body to heal and repair. And so you know everything that we're gonna be talking about here, it's not just for heart health, it's for preventing diabetes and for being healthy and for reversing disease and preventing disease and all of these things. It, it works for all of it because it's the right thing to do, right? Does that make sense to you guys? So it's, it, oh, okay. So I wanna talk about the three major dangers and I wanna talk about the four changes that you need to make. Okay, we'll go deeper in the, the weeds of this on the Nutrition 101, but this is, and when it comes to heart disease, this is it right here. This is it, the three dangers when it comes to heart disease, too much sugar, too many toxins, not enough good fats. That's it, I mean, that's the bottom line when it comes to nutrition. So if you can avoid these three dangers and instead switch to, well, that's really tiny on there, I know you guys can't read that, but we're gonna clean up our carbs, right? Like I just said, we're gonna eliminate the processed carbohydrates. If we are eating carbohydrates, it can come from vegetables right? Vegetables have carbohydrates. And guess what else? Your body can make sugar, make glucose on the fly, right? Your body can manufacture that. You don't have to eat it. Um, and so one of the biggest things with that is getting your body to switch from sugar burner to fat burner, right? We, our bodies were designed to run on fat, not on sugar. It's like, it's much more efficient to run on fat. Um, it can run on sugar, but it's not ideal. Right? And so you get into this perpetual cycle of always needing more sugar, more sugar, more sugar, more sugar. And you're storing fat, storing fat, storing fat. Right? Um, and then we're gonna fix your fats. I already mentioned that. We're gonna perfect your proteins. So this is big with heart disease too because people are eating you know, these animal products from animals that are in feedlots, they're being fed garbage, they're being pumped full of antibiotics and steroids and all of this <laughs> crazy stuff. These animals are eating diets that they were never designed to eat, which makes them what? Sick and diseased, which then we eat that and then we become sick and diseased. Their fatty acid ratios are out of whack, then ours are out of whack. Um, so we have to really perfect our proteins and, and really eat the highest quality animal products that we can find. Grass fed beef, wild caught fish, free range chicken and eggs. Really, really important. This is probably the number one thing I tell people to change because proteins are the building blocks for your body, right? And then we have to trash the toxins. I'm gonna, guy, I'm gonna show you guys some test results. We do nutritional testing where these toxins literally wreak havoc on your body. And when it comes to heart disease, um, did you mention oxidation of cholesterol? Uh, I mean, that, that's really the problem with cholesterol is the oxidation of it. And so these toxins oxidize the cholesterol in your body, which wreaks all sorts of havoc. So these four things, it sounds really simple, right? Does, it's not easy, but it is simple. And so those are the things that we need to be doing um, when it comes to heart disease and really any disease process and just to be healthy. And so he already mentioned this too, we've gotta to start blaming our genes and look to our lifestyle and look to make these changes and make them permanent. Um, and so here, this is from another study too, omega-3 fatty acids, they're essential fatty acids. That's one thing that our body can't manufacture, has to come from our diet. And so this study showed that consuming fish twice per week can result in a 36% reduction of coronary heart disease. Now I know some of you are gonna say, I hate fish. This guy is one of them, right? So if you hate fish, then that's even more reason. You've got to be taking an omega supplement. If you are not eating fish, a good healthy fatty omega-3 high fish, you have to be supplementing it. You have to. You have to, and I got onto my daughter because she just did nutritional testing, and guess what was low? Her omega-3 fatty acids, because she doesn't eat fish, and she's not taking omega supplement, because she's in college and graduated, and she's busy, and blah, blah, blah. 
So yeah, you, and she, yeah. she graduated with a degree in dietetics. In nutrition. <laughs> yeah. So like we can call it out, right? But but it's so important. And she's like, well, you know, I do eat fish sometimes, and I'm like, but you weren't supplementing. And so it's like even the best of us, right? We we have these pitfalls, and so you have to be getting these omegas. And you don't know <laughs> unless it gets measured. You yeah. really don't, especially in this culture, because our food supply is so darn damaged. Yeah. And you think you could be doing great, and you'd be surprised what the outcome is. Yeah, but she's going to be mad at me for calling her out. I should probably should be all right. But anyway, so he mentioned uh, CoQ10. So if you are on a statin, I'm not going to make you raise your hand, or if you know someone on a statin, you have got to be and they have got to be on CoQ10. You have Absolutely. to Absolutely. And to me, I can say this, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a license to lose. That is malpractice in my in my. Um, brain if a doctor prescribes a statin without prescribing or recommending CoQ10. I feel like it's malpractice. Um, and then curcumin is a natural solution to high, um, to inflammation. So the other thing I want to say about our supplements, and we're not here to like push products on you guys or anything, but I can stand behind these because I'll be honest, there's a lot of crappy products out there, right? And the other thing is like some of these things that I recommend are food. So even though it's in a little capsule form, what's inside there? Turmeric. It's a turmeric root that's shaved off and dehydrated and stuffed into a capsule. And so it's a natural solution to inflammation and it's food in there, right? It's healing plant <laughs> properties in that, in that there. So cardiovascular wellness and then um, this, so for cholesterol, you guys have heard maybe about red yeast rice, right? This red yeast rice that we have has CoQ10 in it, so it's like a combo. And then plant sterols, again, because we're looking to get a really uh, quick way to get those nutrients, those vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients in there to combat some of this stuff. Most of it we want to come from lifestyle, and but while you're making those changes to your nutrition and your lifestyle, this is like emergency 911, and right? Let me <laughs> to get the good jump stuff in there. Because you're exactly right there, and I think that's a very valid point, because I had a patient who said, I said, we got this heart workshop coming up. I was like, oh yeah, I, I got on board with all of that. And I was taking um, Lipitor and then I stopped taking that because I read a lot of the science and research and I started taking uh, red yeast rice. And I'm like, that's fine and dandy, but all you're doing is still treating the symptom, yeah. but you're treating it with a natural approach rather than a synthetic chemical approach. It's Which better, better. <laughs> it's better, but the mindset is still wrong. There's still a reason why his body was getting inflamed, causing it to respond by producing more cholesterol. So even if you're treating the symptom with yet red yeast rice, you still have to address the cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. So you use this in the meantime, as you work on your nutrition and you fix the problem, you get to the cause. Yeah. And there's, like I said, there's only one way. And that's through the, the laws and principles that God gave us at Govern Health. Yeah, so we, we call that like a therapeutic regimen. It's like a specific period of time that we're looking to really bring certain markers or certain things back in line. And then I think, uh, oh yeah, so high blood pressure, same thing. Uh, we have a couple of awesome, awesome products that work really well. And again, it's in conjunction with. Um, if you guys have, I think most of you have done the life risk questionnaire. If you have not, you can scan that little QR code or get with us. We can send you the link to it. But it really helps me be able to sit down with you and look at your lifestyle and what things we would look to prioritize for you. So if you haven't done that, um, go ahead and do that and I'll be happy to sit down or, with you. Or even if you have done it and you want to revisit it, that's yeah. no problem. Yeah. We'd love to meet with you guys. Anytime, like sometimes, you know, people come in here, especially in the beginning and they get overwhelmed with <clears throat> all these lifestyle changes and we get that, we understand. So we try to systematically, you know, introduce people to these things. And you can't make like 180 degree, well you can, but it's <laughs> difficult to make those big changes. So if you feel at any point in time, you're like, hey, I'm ready to level up or just take it to the next level, do something different or add this into the equation. I mean, just ask us, yeah. we'll sit down with you. We want to do anything we can to help move you guys along. If it was yeah. up to me, you wouldn't have a choice. If it was up to me, everyone who came through the front door of this office would automatically sign up for care and then by the next day they would start eating better and exercising, removing the toxic loads, thinking a lot differently and doing everything right. But, you know, we respect the fact God doesn't do that to us. He gives us free choice. And so we respect that. 
You have to make your own decisions. Like, I want help for you so bad, but it doesn't matter how badly I want it for you. What really matters is how badly you want it for yourself. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it thirsty. Come on. So Ooh, got, they got one wrong. I've been to my doctor's report. So they got been, one wrong. You have to want it. If you want it bad enough, I promise you, you couldn't find yourself in a better place than this. And we'll do anything for you guys. And we study this stuff night and day, day and night. And the best part about this office is the practical application of this information. We don't just want to like present a problem without being able to take you by the hand and walk you through the process. We want to help you any way we can. That's what we're here to do, right? This is more than a business. It's a calling for us. There's no greater satisfaction than when we watch people transform their, transform their life and reach their full complement for everything that you're intended to be. We want you to serve the purpose that God has planned for you. And it's hard to do if you're sick, suffering, or dead. So let's darn get healthy. That's what we're here to do, right? Let's so, darn get yeah. healthy, a quote by Dr. Fred Roberto. <laughs> let's darn get healthy. Uh, but you can also see the needle move, right? If you're taking it multiple times. That was a, that was a good one. I've never well, heard you say that Dr. before. Dr. Josh from South uh, Georgia just uh, joined our practice way back there today, <laughs> first day. Josh, no, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm, he's rubbing off. I was, I was channeling my inner Dr. Josh. We're going to darn get healthy. And we'll go burn okay. some hay after that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I mentioned that we do testing. It's amazing. And we've honed in on this one test in this one company. And we've been able to really um, get 14 pages of information that shows us exactly what's going on with you. And it, look at all these things it measures. Vitamin, mineral deficiencies, blood sugar imbalance, inflammation we've been talking about, oxidative stress, toxicity, gastrointestinal, stress hormone, fatty amount, I mean, it goes on and on and on. It's 15 pages of stuff, right, Bridgeta? Yeah. <laughs> Tells you a lot of information. Um, so I, I wanted to pick out a couple of markers that come out on these tests that are indicative of potential cardiovascular issues. And so it's really, really cool. Like we're, we're not just doing like a blood test to say, okay, you may have this condition or your thyroid's out of whack or your whatever. Um, we're looking at a cellular level, right? At the precursors to some of these things. So this is like preventative rather than just doing a test and saying you have such and such. And right? this is about like how your food and the nutrients yeah. in that food are actually affecting your physiology in your body. Like yeah. she said on that cellular, cellular and physiological level. Yep. Yeah. So like amino acids, when you see things like arginine high and uh, taurine coming up here that shows you have a huge need for those things, those are things that, that help with like your blood vessels and um, you know, blood pressure and all of those things. So we would be doing some intervention kind of things um, with giving people L-arginine and giving people toluene and giving people um, carnitine tartarate to help with um, this fatty acid imbalance, which is over here. So the beta oxidation here is how your body uses fat and turns it into energy. And so you can see when these are yellow and red, something's broken down there. So then we would supplement with things like magnesium and B2 that is needed to pull into this beta oxidation process. So not to get too in the weeds, but this tells us a lot, right? Here's another one, trans fats. Trans fats, if we see people with high trans fats, I guarantee you they're eating a lot of processed food, a lot of damaged fats, and that is a huge, huge red flag, huge risk factor for cardiovascular disease, huge. Um, and then omega-3 fatty acids, you can see these are all low here. Um, again, this is something we would be encouraging people to eat more fish, uh, good fatty fish, and to supplement. And let me talk about this too for a second. Yep. There's a, like big picture wise, because you look at these things, you're like, you don't even know what half these things are. But we talked about seabirds. It's a concept of, of being pure and sufficient. And as long as your body's pure and sufficient, you give it what it needs, it's going to express an ideal state of health. And so... Here we see an example of both of them. We need to make sure that you're getting the right nutrients, a sufficient amount of the right nutrients to run physiological pathways in the body, metabolic pathways. And if your nutrition is not supplying it, then you are deficient. And when you're deficient, then those pathways begin to break down and it, you literally end up with dysfunctions and dysfunctions over time lead to what? Disease. Diseases. Dysfunction yeah. over time leads to disease. Here you see when pure and sufficient, your body's not pure, it's toxic when you're putting trans fats within it. And these toxic exposures and loads also compromise 
the norm of cellular structure, they compromise the normal physiological processes, they create that same breakdown, metabolic dysfunctions, dysfunctions over time lead to what? Disease. Disease. You need to be pure and sufficient. So from another lens, we're looking at another perspective of a very important component of your health. Mm -hmm. And you're not guessing anymore. Yeah. You don't know how your nutrition is really affecting you, especially in this culture. Maybe if you lived in one of those cultures around the world that had the healthiest, longest lived people, you're eating different foods. You're not exposed to the same toxic exposures. And, but yeah. in America, good luck. And even if you think you're doing perfectly, you're still way off track like my daughter. You would, any one of you guys would look at her and say, oh my God, she's incredibly healthy. And you watch her, how she eats and her lifestyle and everything else, you'd be like, this girl's got it going on. And even she came up deficient. Yeah, because there's pitfalls. We all have pitfalls. We all have blind spots. And so if you have a blind spot, when do you want to know that? Earlier or later? Like I would want to know about these blind spots. It's right? not even that we have blind spots. Yeah. Our culture has blind spots. Yep. And so just a couple other ones, we've talked about antioxidants. And so this person who has a cardiovascular diagnosis has you know, antioxidant deficiencies here, B vitamin deficiencies. Their toxin and detoxification markers are high. And toxins cause oxidative stress, right? It all ties in together. And then this is your lipid peroxide. So this is basically your cell walls. You want that to be pliable and you want good things coming in, bad things going out. When your lipid peroxides are high like this, think about a, like a rigid rubber band. It's kind of stiff and not real pliable, not real flexible. Good stuff can't get in, bad stuff can't get out. This is, this is oxidative stress right here, right? And so this is a huge red flag too. So we would want to address this. Um, and so it's pretty awesome. Like I really geek out about this, um, this testing because I'll be honest, I'm, I'm kind of tired of guessing. Like people will come in with supplements and say, should I be taking these? Should I not be taking these? How much should I be taking? And the answer is, I don't know, right? I don't know. Like a lot of this stuff is great to take and there's some, some basic ones like vitamin D and B complex and magnesium and omega. But beyond that, I can't really answer that question without guessing, right? So that's why I love this so much. So anyway, um, I think I have, yeah. yeah. So. The value of this thing is 1200 bucks, but because we were with Max Living, we were able to like whittle that down. So our pricing is 749, but tonight, if you guys want to get one, I put aside some kits there, it's 636. And for a lot of people, this is not your next step. If you're like brand new into this, there's important things you have to take care of first. Mm -hmm. You can start on this, even if you haven't done any other programs, but especially for people that have been here for a while and you're ready to level up to the next um, aspect of really taking um, your health to where you want to take it you've got to be at some point in time this has to be part of your the equation you've got to be looking at this so we can dial it in for you guys yep and um, this kind of rounds out the the nutrition piece but make sure you guys go to my recipe blog because I have tons of healthy recipes and make sure you get registered for our nutrition 101 which will be next Tuesday and we'll really you know go down to the actual plans and what to eat what not to eat I'll give you some grocery store um, ideas and things like that and you guys get that in a workshop like this we don't have eight hours it's not a seminar so we really can't get into the weeds on the stuff we want to it's really hard so definitely take take her up on doing that nutrition 101 but then you know again we'll if you guys are interested, we're, we'll meet with you privately if we have to on top of that, but, but play your part as well. And, but we wanna get the information out to you guys. So the exercise piece now, again, exercise. So exercise does what nutrition can't, right? Who was I talking to today about this, right? Exercise does what nutrition can't. And nutrition does what exercise can't, and they both do what detox can't. And detox does what a, a, a positive mindset can't do. They all do different things. This is not the game of life a la carte. You don't get to pick and choose what laws and principles <laughs> apply to you. They all apply to all of us all of the time, every single time. That's why a law is called a law, right? <laughs> not subject to interpretation. So exercise, again, is not a good idea if you want to be healthy or something I recommend if you want to be healthy. It's something that you must do, period. And so when we talk about genetics, how about this? 
This one study says that you have a genetic requirement for a certain amount of exercise every day as a human being. And if you don't meet that genetic requirement by making the conscious decision to be lazy and sit on the couch, you also just made the conscious decision to flip your genes into a state of dysfunction or disease. Physical inactivity is an abnormal event program for genome program for activity. You have to move your body. And when you do, you exercise it. And when I say exercise it, you are exercising the muscles and the joints and you're exercising the metabolic pathways, your energy systems. Yeah, you're exercising all of the systems, the cardiovascular system, which we'll be talking about here. You'll be exercising all parts and aspects of your body, and you can look at exercise to be a key component to any physiological process that improves it all, just like all the other essentials does. But when it comes to the heart, the heart's a giant muscle. And the most fundamental principle of exercise is the law of overload and the law of adaptation. And so if you do the same or less than you ever do, then the body breaks down. You don't use it, you lose it. Right? Does that make sense? And that heart begins to atrophy. That muscle begins to atrophy just like other muscles. But when you exercise, then especially when you do more than you're accustomed to, the body's going to adapt and it's going to become stronger and your heart's gonna become stronger, and that muscle develops, right? It's something you must do. But it's not just the heart that develops, the blood vessels develop too. And when you start exercising, and you pump that blood through those tissue cells, then the blood vessels actually become larger, and they spread out in number, and begin to um, bring blood supply to all the tissue cells, and they become more pliable. And those vessels, also, you decrease blood pressure as a result. Because when you're doing the opposite and being sedentary, the opposite effect occurs, and the vessels begin to shrink down, and they become more rigid, and they become smaller. And now when you try forcing blood through those kind of vessels, then you increase the pressure within them, and that's when you end up with higher blood pressure. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Exercise is a critical component if you want to have a healthy heart or if you just want to be healthy in general. It's something that you must do. And the good news is, especially with our exercise programs, you give me minutes a day and we can elicit these effects that go even way beyond that and we'll get better results and outcomes than with conventional programs. All I need is minutes a day. Hey, wait, are you guys happy to know that you don't have to exercise for an hour a day? You don't like, have it to It makes me that. super excited. I literally, today, what was oh it? What God. did we do today? It was nine minutes? I worked out for nine minutes today. That's it. And a tremendous <laughs> effect. And I was, I was huffing and puffing and feeling it. And, you know, even with, so we're talking about short duration, higher intensity. So sometimes you have to get fit to get fit. You have to get in shape to get in shape. And, but better than doing nothing is doing something. And if you just even start with a walk to the mailbox, that may be your starting point, then that's fine. The next day, maybe you walk to the mailbox and back. Or you walk faster to the mailbox. Or you walk faster. Or maybe you do it twice. <laughs> it doesn't have to be much. You just keep improving. And even though you're moving slowly, making small changes, over a period of time, with this law of overload and all, law of adaptation, over a period of time, you'll see big changes. And if you give it enough time, you'll end up in the shape of your life. But just know it's something you have to do. It's not a yeah. suggestion. You just have to do it. I'm sorry. Socrates, again, <laughs> don't be mad at me for telling the truth. I didn't create the laws and principles that govern health. That was God's amazing design. Something you have to do. And we can help you. This is an area where we're experts in this office on exercise for anybody. And I'm, you give me a limitation. Don't blame your age. Don't blame your your bad hip or your bad back don't blame this condition or that diagnosis or anything else you could do something everybody could do something right and you do something today and then tomorrow you could do something more and then i'm telling you over time rome wasn't built in a day and you never want to find out tomorrow you did too much today always take it easy and start building from there but i'm telling you if you take the right approach and you stay committed and, and convicted you could see massive transformation and your heart will thank you. Yeah, this next slide is really cool. So 
What's the gold standard for anyone with heart condition or high cholesterol? Gold standard is medication, right? This is really cool. Um, go ahead. Oh, okay. So, I know. I was, so uh, this was a study, and it said regular exercise can reduce cardiovascular disease by 48 to 57 percent. 48 to 57 percent. If there was a drug that came out tomorrow, it would be a blockbuster drug of that would time. be able to claim 48 to 57 percent reduction in cardiovascular risk. Everybody would be buying that sucker, right? <laughs> like he talked about the dismal results with statins, if you can even count them. Every but single person, exercise. every expert on the planet would recommend it, except yep. for the National Cholesterol Education Program. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, this is, this is no joke. And guess what? This is free. This can be free. And you can do it every single day. And you can reduce your cardiovascular risk disease and risks of other diseases by 48 to 57%. We are called to be obedient and disciplined, but we like to do what's easiest and most pleasing. We'd rather drive through the window at McDonald's, <laughs> give them a couple dollars, have them hand us a bag full of food that tastes really good, that doesn't nourish your body in any regard, is addictive in nature, and literally rob you of your health. And we'd rather sit on the couch and do nothing. But that's not what we're called to do or be. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we want to encourage you guys to step to the plate and do what you have to do these are not things these are not good ideas are the things that you do because you must all right does that make sense to you guys all right you want to hit on mindset yeah, real absolutely quick absolutely i do because this is huge and you know there are systems of the body actually let me do this what's what's this good you're gonna, go, um, I'm gonna I come back have... to mindset go, okay i'm gonna do i'm gonna circle back just um on toxins i've already i've already mentioned this um, but let me just go to the next slide because I have some of them on there. So the most common cardiovascular disrupting toxins, and just so you know, you're more toxic than you think you are because it's everywhere and it's affecting us in ways we have no idea. But the top ones are smoking and vaping. I mean, smoke, cigarettes and vape all have thousands of chemicals in those suckers thousands of chemicals and when it comes to you know it, it's actually restricting your blood vessels both of those things um bpa which is can in I, plastics can interject yeah how on god's green earth did we finally like pull back the curtain on oh, okay. smoking <laughs> and then just completely replace it with vaping which is way more toxic and dangerous <laughs> what <laughs> how did that happen how did that happen do we, we don't not know. use our brains at all? <laughs> and I was talking to my son. Well, they don't there. smell bad. Like vaping doesn't I smell know, bad. I know, but it like doesn't matter. Smoke. I was talking to my son and all of his friends and that, <laughs> that population of kids are doing this stuff. Have we not learned from the past? I just, I'm dumbfounded. I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, so when we talk about our youth and the risk of cardiovascular disease, that's going to be worse. Kind of huge. And cancers. It's going to be worse. And cancers. Um, BPA, again, it's hormone disrupting. It's all of these things. It um, affects your blood vessels, your blood pressure. And then PFOAs, which are, and guess what? Your cookware, Teflon, right? And those things mm -hmm. are causing not only cancer, um, but increases in inflammation, which we've hit pretty hard here tonight. And hormone disruption. Yeah. And, and so else. even if you're trying to be good, like my house, I have these nice fancy um, ceramic coated pans that don't have PFOAs. But when I go to a restaurant, what do you think they're using? They're using Teflon. There's no way they're not using Teflon, right? And so these are things that we're being exposed to that can ha wreak havoc. And like I said, that oxidative stress, um, it can wreak havoc on your, on your system. So we've got to be more diligent. Oh yeah, all that's in water too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. Whole, water is yeah, water is the always whole house filtration system goes a long way. Yep. What's uh, what's the next one look like here? Look, I got it up. Chiropractic. No, no, no. I mean. Oh, you, after that. Yeah, not, yeah. That's, that's all I care about, right? Okay. <laughs> that's like okay. I mean, you guys get it. Like, like for you guys, it, it, it's, you guys are patients here. You you guys understand this, and you know how I feel. Okay, all these other essentials are fine and dandy, but there's nothing that supersedes the nervous system because it's the system that God chose that literally it carries the expression of life to the tissue cells. It carries the connection between man, the spiritual, to man, the physical. It's the system that animates the tissue cells of the body into life. There's nothing more important. This is the innate intelligence that's carried through the nervous system. 
You have to understand when you get adjusted, in the moment of that adjustment, we're releasing that, that imprisoned impulse. We're allowing the brain to openly communicate that the body begins to function and heal at a higher level in that moment. You walk out of this office after an adjustment with your body adapting, functioning, and healing at a higher level than when you walked in. You're more of who God intended you to be after your adjustment because the life can flow across those nerves and your body can animate more at a higher level. We know the science, we know the studies. This is why I travel around and take care of Olympic athletes because in the moment of the adjustment, we show them the science, the heart's beating better and the lungs are breathing better and the muscles are firing more optimally. Countless times, <clears throat> we've even taken like somebody's blood pressure before an adjustment and after and it drops 10 points. Countless times. It's so cool. Countless times. I've come across somebody in a full-blown asthma attack and I adjust them and within moments it stops. I've also heard seawater is good for asthma. Yeah, but we adjust the spine. <laughs> <laughs> That's always gonna be the answer. Yeah, but And there's nothing more important. You gotta understand this is what carries life to the tissue cells of the body. And our whole like our whole system is based around removing interference from the very system that governs and controls how your body functions and heals. And then we teach our patients how to support <clears throat> the life flowing across those nerves by eating good food and exercising and removing the toxic loads. But at the end of the day, think about it. If you are symptomatic, sick, or have a diagnosis of any kind, then that means something's not working right within you, right? Mm -hmm. What controls every single thing in your body? Bar none. How is that not the first place we're looking? How is that not the first place we're looking? And we know that when the spine is out of alignment, even one vertebrae in the spine, even one degree or one millimeter, that it's affecting neurology at that level. And depending on the level of the spine, determines where the nerves go to and what part of the body becomes af affected. And, and the area that becomes dysfunctional. And we know that dysfunction over time leads to what? <clears throat> Not sometimes, it's every time. Your body's building disease to some state or another to the extent of the misalignments, to the extent of the compromise to the nervous system, is the extent that your body's building disease and you've got to get the pressure off, that, off those nerves. And then you support the life with those other essentials. And we know when the curve in your neck breaks down and your head falls forward, we know that the brain goes with it and you're stretching the spinal cord. And when you're stretching the spinal cord, this one guy's neuroscience says you're also affecting the area where the spinal cord meets the brain stem. Areas that control blood pressure, immune response, focus, concentration, mood and emotion. And you're also tugging on nerve roots that come out of the base of the neck that go to the thyroid, the heart and the lungs. It's impossible for your body to be functioning normally when you lose that curve and your head is falling forward. We know that the nervous system has got these different divisions. Are you familiar with the autonomic nervous system? So that would be your sympathetics and your parasympathetics. And these nerves, these two different divisions go to all the parts and all of the organs of your body. All the systems are controlled through your sympathetics and your parasympathetics. One of the division slows down function in the body. One of them speeds it up. And so if you go run around the building a couple times, what happens to your heart rate? It goes up because you need to pump blood through the body. What happens to your lungs and your respiration? Because your body needs oxygen to keep running. What happens to your blood pressure in that moment? It goes up because of all the increased blood flow through those vessels. That's the normal physiological response in that environment and your nervous system adapts you to your environment and all environments in an ideal state because remember, there's a spirit within you, a doctor within you that knows everything, knows how to control the body in its ideal environment no matter what the circumstances are. And then, when you come inside from running and you sit down, what happens to your heart rate? And what happens to your respiration? 
So what happens to your blood pressure? It goes, down. it goes down because in a resting state that's not a normal physiological response you don't have to tell the body what to do it does it innately and when you've got good tone of your autonomic nervous system when I say tone everything is working the way it's intended to if you have one division that's hyperactive or one division that's hypoactive then the tone is off and then the body's not expressing in its normal state the way it's intended to because your nervous system's adapting you to your environment. And when you're subluxated and the spine's out of alignment, it affects that tone to the nervous system. And we start seeing dysfunctional patterns in the body. The body's in a state of dysfunction and dysfunction over time leads to what? Disease, not sometimes, every time. It's because of these issues with the nervous system and there are other essentials that also affect the nervous system in a very similar way. That's why I said, let me hold on to the, the mindset. And so Can I mention something real quick before you move on to that? Because this is so cool. I picked up this book. It's from a medical doctor. It's called Human Heart, Cosmic Heart. And what, I haven't even gotten through the whole thing, but what jazzed me up about it is he talks about the nervous system in it and how important the sympathetic and parasympathetic and the vagus nerve, which chiropractic adjustments can directly impact your vagus nerve. He talks about it. There's a whole chapter on the nervous system in here. He's a medical doctor. What's and he's, it? it's called Human Heart, Cosmic Heart. It's so, so good. Um, and he brought in some of the, the more spiritual kind of stuff too that happens with your heart. And so it's, it's so cool. It's really, really good. But to have a doctor saying, okay, let's look to the nervous system when it comes to heart conditions. I was like, yes, it's awesome. You guys, you guys get like when we adjust you, we're resetting the tone to the nervous system at that level of the spine. Yeah. And you're walking out here, your body functioning and healing at a higher level. And the crazy thing is too, it's like when you leave the office, you remember that muscles and joints have memory. And so the, you start to lose the effect of that adjustment over a period of time. And when we start creating new muscle and joint memory, and this is what separates this chiropractic office from most others, is that we're doing corrective care on top of this. So we're doing the kind of care that's trying to reestablish these patterns over time. And then when you come in here, we take a post X-ray for every degree and millimeter of change. You gotta understand that the effect of the nervous system and the reset to the neural tone isn't just occurring in the moment of the adjustment anymore. Now you're walking around with a reset to this tone with your body adapting and functioning and healing at a higher level, you become healthier. Do any of you guys feel your prefrontal cortex stimulated by 30% when you get adjusted? This is very specific to this talk. Do you feel that? Anyone? Do you feel your prefrontal cortex stimulated by 30% when you get adjusted? What would no, that actually don't feel, feel like? that. But your, free, your prefrontal cortex, we know this through the science, is down-regulating chronic inflammation in your body. And you're living these lifestyles that are creating massive inflammation. And because you're subluxated, the whole system is out of balance, and your body is not keeping that inflammation in check appropriately. When it's out of check, when it's not down-regulating, then it stays in this chronic inflamed state. And this chronic inflammation is at the, the, the crux of all new millennium diseases like cancer and autoimmune conditions and diabetes and heart disease. This is why your body's producing cholesterol because of the chronic inflammation. You gotta understand, you have high blood pressure. When we adjust the upper cervical spine, it's, have, it's, the, it's the part of the nervous system that controls your, your blood pressure. People having dysrhythmias. What do you think is controlling your heart and its heart rate and how it beats and all those other things? It's the nervous system that's governing and controlling all of these things. I'm telling you, it's amazing what happens when you get adjusted. It's absolute like something that people need to really fully understand and grasp. You've got to see the science behind it because it's irrefutable. And it's steeped in law and it's steeped in the basic sciences of anatomy and physiology. I'm not putting anything in your body or taking anything out. We're just removing interference from the very system that governs and controls everything in your body that literally God chose to be the system that connects man to spiritual to man to physical. You, I don't know if you guys know when I adjust you, 
it's very intense for me, every adjustment. I mean, you probably see me, my eyes are closed, we're just in state. And that's what I'm thinking is, I have an opportunity here to reconnect man to spiritual to man to physical, and I know this person is gonna walk out of here a better version of who God intended you to be. That's what I'm thinking when I adjust you, just so you know. That's what you're walking into. Our intention is probably a lot different than many others. Don't think for a second, if you come in and you say, my neck hurts, I'm adjusting you because you got neck pain. I don't even consider that. <laughs> I mean, I hate to be callous about it. I don't want to see you <laughs> suffering, but not what I'm thinking ever. And when you start getting pressure off the nervous system for the sake of being healthy and becoming more vital and whole and who <clears throat> you're intended to be, and you get the pressure off those nerves, guess what happens to those symptoms? They begin to go away, but I'm adjusting you for one reason only every time. That's for you to be healthy. That's what I'm adjusting you guys for. And the other things are side effects. And those are good side effects, and I love it, right? But that's not what chiropractic is. Just, just so you know what you're getting when you come in here. That leads back to mindset. And so very similarly, your mind is, has a huge influence over your body's physiology. Your, your physiology literally changed with, with, with the way you think. And so it's like that whole fight or flight mechanism, right? You guys are familiar. And that just gets back into the autonomic nervous system. When you get all stressed out and worried or filled with anxiety or fear, you're literally stimulating your sympathetic response. Your body goes to fight or flight, which means it's getting geared up to either fight a bear or to run from it. And so your whole physiology begins to change. And if you don't exercise that physiology and fight that bear or start running, then that physiology doesn't match the state of sitting behind a desk or behind a car. And you're not exercising the way that the body's intended to be in that moment. And you're literally causing damage because you're just sitting there. But your body's, your heart's racing, your blood <laughs> pressure's going up, your digestion's shutting down. The, the physiology doesn't match. So basically, you're not in a normal state of function for that environment, which means you're in a dysfunctional state. And we know that dysfunction over time leads to what? It leads to diseases. It's no big deal if you're stressed out for five minutes one day, but if you're stressed out, worried, filled with anxiety and fear and all these things all of the time every day, well, you're putting your body in a massively dysfunctional state because of the way you think. And you have to change that. Mindset is critically important. Right? Does that make sense to you guys? So we've got to <coughs> clean up the way we think, and that's a critical essential. And so one of my favorite workshops, I've got to do it. Can we get it on the books, the whole stress management workshop? You don't need to, I call it stress management just because that's what people relate to. You don't need to manage your stress. That's not what you need to do. That's like managing your disease. You don't need to manage your disease. What do you need to do? You what is it? You really well, you don't, so that's reactionary. You're getting rid of something you already have. And it's not even prevention. You see, if you focus on preventing disease, you're missing the boat. You have to focus on creating amazing health and vibrant life in your body. Because in the abundance of light, there is no darkness. In the abundance of health, there is no sickness and disease. What you need to focus on is creating peace. That's what you need to create in your body. You focus on that because when there's an abundance of peace in your life, there is no stress, right? You guys with me on that too? And that's, that's what like our, 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 like, um, our Max Mind workshop, our stress management workshop is completely different than what you would expect from most people. We're not gonna be doing massages and uh, you know, talking about like <laughs> squeezing a ball after you get stressed out and things like that. Let's start focusing on creating Kristen amazing peace that in your health and your life. And when you do that, amazing things begin to happen and you can start to regulate and harmonize from that perspective. You've got to put all of these essentials together. Does that all make sense? But it all starts with a healthy nervous system. And by the way, if you guys know anyone that needs to hear this message, especially when it comes to their health, especially about the nervous system, I, this is part of our mission. Every time I do a talk, I offer for people to come in and get evaluated if they need to. 
And there are times along your journey in this office, you guys are under care, but you know people that are home praying for answers and they need to hear this information. There's a different way we can approach our health than America typically does, and there's a different way we can approach health care. And no one's telling them all of this information. They're just hear hearing what's on the news. And the news is just a mouthpiece for the cultural values that are created in this country, which are being driven by big pharma and modern medicine. That's all people get to hear. They don't get to hear the real answers about what it means to be healthy and well. You guys know anyone who, who needs to get into this office we always give you two weeks to, to send anyone in and we'll, and we'll do an evaluation with them. And there's no obligation, no one has to be a patient. But they, everyone deserves the right to at least hear this information and then people could take the information. Yeah, and know how their, their nervous system is functioning and healing. I did wanna um, cover one cool slide. Okay, so here's some other things. And actually some of these were in this book which again, jazz me up because I'm like, these are things that I do. Um, but he mentions this stuff. And so normal medical doctors would just focus on like the medications and things like that. But other things, drink pure water. Brigida mentioned water. You have to be drinking pure water and a lot of it. Get sun exposure. At the beginning I said, you know, there's energies, there's vibrations and your heart works on those things too. And when you're in the sun and you have most of your skin exposed and you're not putting sunscreens on and all those things, now you're not gonna go out and burn your skin, right? But you're getting sun exposure. That is energy, that is vibration, that is helping all the systems of your body. It does amazing things, and too many people are staying out of the sun. Uh, get sun exposure. Grounding, who knows what grounding is? You do. Do you do it? You do it, yeah. Take your shoes off, stand in the grass, stand on rocks, stand on stone. Ideally, be on a beach with water. We don't have that here, but water. Barefoot. And if, and if you um, go to the beach with water, take a chiropractor with yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife, I want to go too. But no, that, so, I mean, when you think about this, it's the energies, the vibrations. Like we were designed to be in tune with nature, right? To be in tune with our environment. And so it just makes sense that this could affect something like your heart. Now these things, more people would say like, oh, this is woo woo. But I'm telling you, like you have to think bigger picture and like what God intended. Like some of this stuff would be like grounding, really? What's that gonna do? But um, you guys know what woo woo means, right? Yes. Okay. Well, you've not heard that term before? Anyway, get deep sleep. You have to be getting deep, deep sleep where your body's healing and repairing. If you're not sleeping well, if you're not getting a deep sleep, that means trouble. So you have to get to the root cause of that. That could be millions of different things causing you not to be able to sleep. But this is huge for cardiovascular health and just to be healthy in general. Um, and this with um, cardiovascular, tracking your heart rate variability, I'm not gonna go into it too much, but it's a really cool um, measurement that it's looking at the, the time that elapses between heartbeats right and you want that to be variable and it kind of alludes to the you know switching back from parasympathetic to sympathetic and so it's a really cool tracking i track this for a long long time and it's just so cool because you can identify like when you have stress when you have things going on in your life and you can see that number going lower and lower so it helps you kind of keep on track let me, let me touch but, on this because it's yeah. not on here but some of these things you can see why they're effective because they help to calm the body down mm -hmm and to reset the tone mm -hmm. and the balance of your autonomic nervous system. Yep. What's not on here, which would be even more effective than any of these things. What did I forget? How about praying? Yeah. And so you pray on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And how about loving and serving God and loving and serving one another? Yep. Because when you're helping other people, you're literally increasing your, vibra your vibrancy frequency. Mm -hmm. And we all have vibrancy frequency to us and it's a, basically a state of your spirit. And the more, the higher your vibra vibratory frequency, the more alive you actually are. When you're helping people, you become more alive. Yep. Right? And so I, do those Actually, things. I meant to put it on there. I can't believe I didn't, but along those lines, just helping any living thing. So that can be plants too, right? Let's, let's get back to gardening and being in nature and taking care of things, right? When you're doing that, when you're taking care of living things, it's like, it, it pays back. Right, and so again, these things yeah, are kind when, of. When you're touching the plant, you put in your hands in the dirt. Yeah. I do that all the time. Yeah, I hands in the dirt, feet, feet in the just dirt. Make sure like, it's not just poison ivy. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so I'm kind of ending on this because you know it, it all works together, and we have to take a step back and like.
take a step back and really realize like how our bodies were designed to work and how simple things like this can help us so, so much, whether it's our heart or whatever. Oh yeah, EMFs, oh, that's what I wanted to mention. So your Apple Watch, if you have one, tracks heart rate variability. I can show you how to get to it. I don't wear this all the time because of what she just said, because of the electromagnetic pollution and it interferes with things like vibrations and energy. So I don't wear it all the time, but I will put it on to track my heart rate variability and then take it off and I don't wear it all the time. So anyway, on that note, um, just uh, the Nutrition 101, um, we also have Patient Appreciation Day on Wednesday. I'm going to be making grass-fed hamburgers and hot dogs on Wednesday. So if you have appointments, we're going to share some healthy food. And that's a great day if you want to have anyone get checked out that you know. Yep. Send them in on that day. We're raising money for Must Ministry. And yeah, so. please, please, if you guys have it in your heart to donate, our goal is $10,000 for them. They do amazing things, and we really, really want to bless them. And, and if anyone's we interested, are. we're going to do a passive 30-day challenge. Um, starting in the next oh, uh, okay. couple days. <laughs> Did you know that, Sarah? So. This is news to us. Okay. So, surprise. <laughs> surprise. So, so in other words, if you want to just start like, like leveling up <laughs> or just up in your game in some regard, we can give you some resources and just tell you, um, you can focus maybe on nutrition or exercise or both of them or whatever. Um, but we're going to take a couple people through a little bit of a process. Yeah. So. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, we're going to do a raffle? Well, we'll do that too, but um, real quick, you have your order forms. We're doing 15% off, so even if we don't have stock over there, you guys can peruse and see what we have. We will order it for you once you place your order. Um, if you want to order one of those test kits um, at the price, it's $636. Uh, they have some kits over there, and I think that's it, right? So get your, get your orders in. Eventually, everyone's going to get that done. So do it sooner or later. Do it when you get the biggest breaks. But it's something that yeah. you guys are going to have to do at some point in time. You just have to. Yep. And then I'm going to oh, finish it. Do you have a finishing comment before we do the raffle? No. Do you have the raffle stuff? So here, here's my. Oh, there it is. I'm going to start off with the same way I. Thanks, Sarah. I mean, I'm going to finish off with the same way I started. All right, Romans 12:2. Same thing as Martin Luther King's quote. Do not conform to the ways of this world, but be transformed by a renewal of the mind so you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and holy and pleasing. That's exactly what Martin Luther King said. Don't follow the ways of this world. Change the way you think. Be able to discern what God's way is, the natural order, and align with that. And that's what we're programmed to do. Amen mm -hmm. to that. Yep. So for you guys spending, oh, it's less than two hours with us. I thought we would get to two hours. Which is yeah. less than you would be to go to a movie, and you got hopefully. Do you know how hard it is to like <laughs> pare down twelve hours of information into two hours? All right, so we've got some stevia-based candy, uh, so no sugar in this guy. Who's got it? Where is it? It's right here. Oh, right what there. do you mean? What? I'm holding it. Five forty-eight. Last three digits. Five forty-eight. They're actually really good. I love these things. Ricky, you, Ricky, you can't win. He gets all the stuff at home. Alright, well you have to keep that. Right. What's next, Kim? Uh, shaker bottle. For the pr whey protein that you guys are going to get. <laughs> 546. Oh wait, that was, that was the one right after, wasn't it? No, that'd be four, 547. Hey, you're making you're running. Hey, wait. Does anyone want to do a fortune anymore? <laughs> okay, what do we got next? Let's do a max GI and then we'll do a protein. All right. We got lots of prizes. Max Sarah GI. got lots of prizes. 538. <laughs> All right. Oh, good. Aren't you glad you came? And then are we doing a chicken dinner and then a million dollars after that? No one else claimed it. What's that? All right. A, a jug dinner of after protein. After a chicken dinner. Okay. Five twenty-nine. All right. Enjoy. This is chocolate. Now for the million dollars. Yeah. If this was a million dollars, this person would have won. Oh my gosh. 540. Yes. <laughs> it's not a million dollars. All right. If this was a chicken dinner. Oh my gosh, stop if it. If this was a chicken dinner, you'd be winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, oh my gosh, 532. So, he's very strange you're the imaginary sometimes. chicken dinner winner. I think he's, right. I think he's uh, punchy right. at this point. All right. We appreciate you guys. Yes, thank you, thank you guys. Out. Any questions? Ask him. <laughs>